Last time, we saw that interpolation is useful when you have a set of data and need values between those data points. We also saw that linear interpolation is a simple approach that accomplishes this goal, but in this episode we'll explore how we can do better if we use a Lagrange polynomial instead of a line. First, we pick a point in our data set. Let's call it xj. Next, we take the x value we're interested in and subtract from it every data point in our set except xj. Then we multiply each of these pieces together. Next, we do the same thing with xj. We subtract from it every data point except xj and multiply these pieces together. Then we divide the first cluster of factors by the second cluster of factors. Lastly, we multiply this long fraction by the value of the dependent variable at xj. This is a complicated formula, and it's just one of many terms in our polynomial. The good news is, we obtain the others by taking a sum over j. Again, the only trick is to avoid subtracting by xj, otherwise we would divide by zero. The result is something called the Lagrange polynomial, which has some very special properties that we'll see in a moment. In this code, which is available in a link in the description below, we've set up a Lagrange polynomial function that takes in the value of x we're looking at and a list of data points that we've collected. First, we initialize the value of our Lagrange polynomial to zero. Then we loop over j. This is the index of the x value we're currently subtracting from in the denominator. Then we initialize our current term to one. Notice that we initialize to zero for a summation, but we initialize to one for a product. Here we set up our product, looping over a new index i. Here we make sure we skip over i equals j, and then we multiply our product by x minus xi and divide by xj minus xi. After finishing the product, we multiply by the value of the dependent variable and add this term to our polynomial. Once our summation is finished, we return the value of the Lagrange polynomial at x. Here's the Lagrange polynomial fit for our data from last time, and it looks so much better! There aren't kinks at each data point, and it produces the maximum fairly well. And you can see that the Lagrange polynomial is designed to pass through every data point exactly. But if we zoom out and look at the endpoints of our data range, we see some problems. There aren't supposed to be maxes and mins out here, and the endpoints of our polynomial are an outright disaster. What's going on here? Well, think about all the terms we're multiplying together to get this polynomial. We have 21 data points, which means that each term in our summation has 20 factors of x minus a number, giving us a polynomial that starts with x to the 20th power. It's a wonder this monster is well behaved at all. And the problem won't go away with more data points, because then the polynomial's order will only increase. Not only is a high order polynomial problematic on the graph, it's also unphysical. The universe usually doesn't give us high order polynomials, so fitting with a function like this might not be the best idea to begin with. Next time, we'll take a look at how we can modify the Lagrange polynomial approach to get better behavior out of our interpolation. In the meantime, we'll note that we can use this approach to examine the middle of our data range and stay safely away from the endpoints. You should now be able to create a Lagrange polynomial from a set of data to obtain values between the data points. Copy the code in the link in the description below and enter this data into a list. Then use the Lagrange polynomial function to answer the questions on the screen.